E up everybody, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all well on this Saturday. So today's video is going to be part 7 of me and RL rivalry series. I've already done 6 other parts, go check out those videos where I talk about all the rivalries in the National Rugby League, New South, Wales, New South Wales Rugby League ever. Tonight, part 7, is going to be Canterbury Bankstown against Eastern Suburbs or as they're known today, Sydney Roosters. So this is a competitive rivalry. Both clubs haven't particularly liked each other since they first met in 1935. But tonight I'm going to go through their head to head. I'm going to go through the big moments. And we're going to discuss some other things about the rivalry. Before I get into the video I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel. Thank you for all your support and kind words. And continue to support me because I'll keep putting out the content. So thank you very much to everyone. So we're going to get into the video now. We're going to start this rivalry off. We're going to go all the way back to 1935 when the two clubs first met. So the two clubs met in the 1935 New South Wales Rugby League season. It was Canterbury's first year in the competition. Eastern Suburbs are a foundation club founded in 1908. So their first meeting was on the 18th of May 1935. And Eastern Suburbs beat Canterbury 87 points to 7 at the Sydney Sports Ground. Dave Brown, who's an immortal of the game, scored 5 tries and kicked 15 goals that day. This remains the second biggest score in rugby league history in Australia. The biggest of course being St George and Canterbury, 91-6. And it remains obviously the biggest score between the two clubs. Then we go forward to 1938, so Canterbury had to wait a bit of time to get their first win over East, and they did that in 1938, round 5, at the Sydney Cricket Ground, Canterbury won that match 28 points to 9. In the same year, both clubs met each other in the grand final. Eastern Suburbs were going for their fourth premiership in a row under the coaching of Arthur Pony Halloway, whereas Canterbury were in their first ever decider. And Canterbury, well, they shocked everyone. They won that match 19 points to 6 to clean their first premiership after only being founded three years previously. So, a good effort for Canterbury and obviously disappointing for Eastern Suburbs not to get far in a row. Then we go forward to 1940. The two clubs, once again, meet in the grand final. Except on this occasion, Eastern Suburbs win the match 24 points to 14. So East get their revenge on Canterbury for losing that grand final a couple of years previously. Then the following year, the two clubs met each other in the preliminary final. And on this occasion, Eastern Suburbs were the better team yet again, but only just winning 24 points to 22. Then the two clubs didn't meet each other in a finals match or a really, really big match until 1967 when the two clubs met in a semi-final and on that occasion Canterbury beat Eastern Suburbs 13 points to 2. Of course Canterbury went on to reach the grand final that year against South Sydney but they went down. Then we go to the 1974 grand final. So the two clubs meet each other in yet another grand final and on this occasion Eastern Suburbs under the coaching of Jack Gibson win their first premiership since 1945 by a score of 19 points to 4. Then the following uh, two year later, Canterbury and Eastern Suburbs meet in yet another finals match. And on this occasion, Canterbury are too strong for Eastern Suburbs winning 22 points to 13. Then we go forward to 1980. Canterbury Bankstown are in another grand final against Eastern Suburbs. This match is remembered for Steve Gearin's try where he started off a high kick, towered above two Eastern Suburbs players to score and Canterbury on that day went to win their first premiership defeating Eastern Suburbs in the grand final 18 points to 4. It was, the, it was Canterbury's drought breaking premiership, the club hadn't won a premiership since 1942 so a 30 year, year, year wait was over and obviously for Eastern Suburbs they had a strong year but on grand final day, they were, they were second best. Then it wasn't until 1999 that the two clubs met each other again. 
in a finals match. And on this occasion, Canterbury won 12 points to 8 at the Sydney Football Stadium. Then in, in, the, in the early 2000s, so from about 2000 to 2004, that's when the rivalry really picked up again. The clubs met each other in some big games. Um, there was a lot of fierceness in, in, the, in the battles between the Fords and the players on the field. And one of the, the main matches from this era was the 2003 preliminary final when Eastern Suburbs beat Canterbury 28 points to 18 to book their place in the grand final. Of course, they lost the grand final the next week against Penrith. Then the following uh, year, 2004, it was a round three match and Eastern Suburbs beat Canterbury 35 points to nil at the Sydney Football Stadium. And I remember watching this game on the telly and uh, uh, during the second half, plea had to be stopped because there was smoke bombs left let off in the crowd. There was firecrackers going off and both sets of supporters were just fucking leaning into each other. It got really ugly on the field, but it, it got even uglier in the stands. And as a result, some of the Canterbury players, um, some of the Canterbury fans were given uh, life bans from attending any of the rugby league matches. So it was a very ugly scene that night. I remember it really, really well. And it was a, a very low point for Canterbury in the rivalry. But in the same year, for all you Canterbury fans out there, of course you remember this, the 2004 Grand Final. Canterbury ended up winning that match 16 points to 13 at the Olympic Stadium. Um, it was a very tense, tough match. It could, have gone, it could have gone either way. I remember right on full time, Andrew Ryan tackled Mick Crockett, who had a clear burst on the line. If Andrew Ryan misses that tackle, Eastern Suburbs score and win the Premiership on the full time siren. So that was a big moment in the rivalry. Canterbury, as of 2020, that's their last Premiership, but they got their win over their rivals. Then we go forward to 2015. And Eastern Suburbs and Canterbury play each other in another finals match, this time the semi-final. And Eastern Suburbs win this match 38 points to 12 at the Sydney Football Stadium. And this has been the last time that both clubs have met each other in a finals match. So with this rivalry, it's a competitive rivalry. Both clubs don't like each other. Both sets of supporters don't like each other. I know I've, I've got mates that are Eastern Suburbs, Sydney Roosters supporters. I've got mates that are Canterbury supporters and I can tell you that when both clubs meet each other, they don't like each other. It's not a fierce, fierce rivalry, so it's not like a, a Sydney Roosters Eastern Suburbs versus South Sydney type of a rivalry or a Parramatta versus Canterbury type of a rivalry, but it's still very competitive. Both clubs want to win and it's a rivalry that stretches all the way back, as I said, to 1935. So head to head... The two clubs have played each other 185 times. Eastern Suburbs have won 93. Canterbury have won 86 and there's been six draws. And going back to the biggest scores. So I mentioned Eastern Suburbs' biggest score, which was their first ever match against Canterbury. 87 points to 6, I believe. But I'll, for all you Canterbury fans out there, your biggest win over Sydney Roosters, Eastern Suburbs come in round three, 2010, when Canterbury gave out a hide in the East, beating them 60 points to 14. Of course, that year, the Sydney Roosters ended up reaching the grand final after being wooden spooners a year before. Another thing that's added to the rivalry, especially in the, in the late 2000s, was the defection of some of Canterbury's favourite sons to Eastern Suburbs, most notably Willie Mason, Breath and Asti, Neat Miles and Marco Mealy all departed Canterbury to go over to Bondi in the late 2000s. Also, Sonny Bill Williams, who walked down on Canterbury in 2008, when he returned to Rugby League, he didn't go back to Canterbury. He went to Eastern Suburbs, which put a lot of people's noses out of joints. And when he scored a try in his return match against Canterbury, he celebrated with the crowd, so that added an extra bit of resentment from Canterbury fans where the fact that 
he'd scored against his former club and he continued to celebrate. All the players that have played for both clubs in recent times have been Brett Morris and Sam Perrett. Two of those players have played um, also in grand finals as well for both clubs. So interesting stat there. But that's my rivalry video for Eastern Suburb Sydney Roosters against Canterbury Bankstown. It's a long story of rivalry, very competitive. And I hope that maybe you've learned something from this rivalry video today, learned about some matches that you didn't know of. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. If you really enjoyed it, please share it with your friends and family. Did I get the rivalry right? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have some spare time, go over to Rugby League History. That's my Facebook page. I put a link in the description below. And I've also started an Instagram page Ruby League History Instagram page. So go check that out as well. I put a link in with the Facebook link. But as always, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Tara.